What is going on? Everyone, my name is Boyt, and I am joined with the fabulous, the effervescent, the ever-present, Mr. Husk Soup. What's up, everyone? Yeah. Not ever-present. Oh. Well, in I'm my... here now, though. Okay, all right. Well, that's good enough. It's morning in the left side of the map, in the red color, playing as Set. We have another Set player! I Set enjoy a lovely. His name is Joe. His partner's today in the blue color playing as Uranus. It's Sheltie in the green color playing as Fox. It's Isis. No, playing as Isis is Fox. <laughs> uh, in the purple color playing as Uranus, it's Marcos. And in the sky blue color playing as Poseidon, it's Kabu. And finally, in the yellow color playing as Gaia, it is Awas. And we have PXX versus Dodd. I'm excited. Interesting god choices here. It's double Egyptian versus double Atlantean, right? Exactly. Very, very interesting. Oh, there, so... there is one Atlantean for the DoD players, but set Ra oh, yeah. or set so it's, Isis. It's... Wow. Set Isis Oranos for DoD, and then Poseidon and double Atlantean for PXX. Yeah. I yeah, mean, so obviously Atlantean and Egyptian, the most favorite civilizations here by these two teams. And it makes sense because Atlantean historically is, they don't need Hunt to uh, to do their thing. And for Egyptians, if they can get to that heroic age, they don't really need Hunt either. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Alfheim can be uh, a, a whirlwind of different maps. You can get tons of Hunt to like next to no Hunt. Like... Um, what is it two you could get a two deer three sorry two deer two what is it two elk three deer alfheim and you can also get like ten five packs of it five elks and random stuff yeah, like and sometimes that. it's literally like a marsh but yeah. on alfheim exactly yeah, this one by the looks of it is really low hunt yeah, this is wild. Gabu here is on Poseidon now. Obviously, Gabu is a Loki player. He is going to be getting targeted ban target banned throughout these sorts of series because everybody knows he's, he's quite good on the Loki, plays a lot of it in his team games. So he's going to be being pushed off that. I imagine PXX banned Ra here because Fox is a Ra player. Um, being pushed onto Isis as a Ra player, Isis plays very, very differently to um to raw like you have to early game mid game it's very very different so we'll see if he's going to be able to deal with the problems i think on a map like this with so little hunt there is the option and i don't know how you like this but there is the option of going for a really big prosperity mm. and transitioning into a big farm boom just getting like 20 farms up and running with yeah. the prosperity I like that a lot more if you've got a raw player on your team. But mm. seeing how many cows are here, I I reckon you should just rush out a husbandry. Go to town centers, rush out husbandry, eat the uh, eat the cows on the second town center, eat the the berries on your home town center, and I mean if you've got some decent hunt at the back, obviously try and eat that. But you're probably going to get pushed off it. And you can probably get yourself like a yeah. nine minute heroic age with with that sort of an opener. Also important to keep in mind that he is against two Atlantean players. So if he does go for that heroic gate and he just barely squeezes enough food in, you know, he can't just rely on pure Terida just because the Atlantean players will easily counter that with Termas. Exactly, exactly. There's um there's there's also the the option of going for pre siege here, especially with set as well at the top and and the Uranus play being able to like gear in onto that idea being that you can go for a, a, a like a one talent center Isis pre siege set play can go for a two talent center uh, fast heroic age shifting sands the priests and the, the siege into the opponent's base ancestors 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 eclipse and absolutely just demolish an entire player as an idea. Like, this could be what they're planning for some for some crazy. Never mind, we're seeing as fast as I can tell. So no, I take it all back. I like that idea though, doing some form of uh, shifting sense with the ancestors' eclipse attack. 
Yeah. Because that's oftentimes the, the case. If you do the priests and siege, it's a brutal army, but they're very slow. Yeah. Very difficult to maneuver around. So with the shifting sands, you can get right into the fray and attack maybe one base followed by the next. For sure. And also you can have the, the Aranus play run across the map and join in as well. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. What's happening here anyways, it's uh, Uranus versus Uranus. Uranus. Okay. And Shelty just having a little bit of problems in the early game because Marcos went for the early Valor on those Oracles, which can seem to be a good way to go, but and you do get yourself a little bit more military because your Oracles actually become units you can use, but oftentimes it tends to be a little bit easier for the player who just Valors the Mermilla heroes get that advantage back the thing is though i i well i play chronos and i most of the time whenever i'm atlantean and i really enjoy getting the oracle heroes because um if you can manage to snipe down the mamillo heroes they're not even that more durable than regular mamillos yeah yeah i i yeah it's a big kill here this is good. Gabu not paying attention. Gabu does have his second town center up, so he's going for a bit of a boom. He's got to compete with the Egyptians, but here's, the, here's my, my, my honest opinion on this is if you're not playing Ra, playing against Poseidon, a boomed Poseidon as Egyptian is really, really tough. Uh, and even someone as good as Joe is going to be fun, struggling here, uh, you'd have to expect. Um, so we'll see yeah. how it's going to go and if Gabu can actually get his economy going and, and not die before he gets big in this game. And also, got to be got to look out for Gabu to make some really nice side builds and just be really annoying with some forward walls, forward stables, forward archery ranges, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. It's so it's so obnoxious. And you can also get that Aphrodite and with Divine Blood. Cause a lot of problems. Uh, it, I mean, at, in the end here, it looks like F Fox is just getting what he wants. Owas is getting what he wants. He's got his two town centers up. He's got his economy going really, really nicely. We'll check out his economic upgrades soon. Yeah. Nice little shockwave here from uh, Shelty getting some nice picks. Shockwave. Really nice damage here from Shelty. Actually managing to micro those term enemy terms really well there as well. Yeah, that's a lot of dead units from uh, from Marcos. He's definitely having some difficulty here. But Gabu's trying to get that, uh, get that. Well, Shelty's trying to get that raid onto Marcos, and I think you just got to be playing defensive in the mirror matchup here. You're not looking for too many advantages here. You're hoping that your your Egyptian players are, you can just come over and help out. I see some hyena oh, set coming out here for <laughs> Joe as he wants to get the uh, the town center. But the Pharaoh oh, looks like it's going to go down. It's close. Nine HP. Making a break for a speed walk. The Pharaoh, my boy. Speed walk it. Get into the tower. Run for the oh, tower. He, he bumped into it. Uh, <laughs> great pick there for Gabu. Really, really nice pick there for Gabu. Uh, and Joe pushed back. Yeah, this is cute. exactly what he needs. So much wasted village of time there because that TC is almost built, but now they're forced to retreat. Oh, yeah. Shifting, shifting sands change. back as well. That's nightmare case for DoD to start this game off. Yeah. We also get to see a uh, a fight in this center. That I, I I must say I just never know who's gonna win these fights. It's always confusing. I don't know what you're supposed to look for to see who's gonna be in front because it just it seems like it goes either which way. But it looks like Shelty's coming out in front for the time being. Yeah, the Atlantean mirror is very very difficult because the Prometheans will oftentimes soak up so much damage that. It's honestly a really big micro fight. The micro is such a big factor in those fights. Yeah. This is a uh, finally going to get the Rob town center up here. here. Yeah, he's going to get it up though. It's not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Like, he, he, Joe, Joe, kind of, he's not going to lose this game anytime soon. But he might gradually lose the matchup. Is his probable plan here, while hoping that his partners can kind of push through their, their enemies here. We've already got Alas on his front base here, Palace coming up, Contarius coming up. He's got his boom. Gaia boom, if you let the Gaia boom as Isis, yes, you've got that Ancestors Eclipse timing push to come, but you're on a bit of a timer in, a, in, in some degree. The guy can push you. 
uh, pretty hard. We'll see if that's going to be a, a problem there. Yeah, and also an issue with uh, with the Isis versus Gaia here is that even if you do manage to get a good answer to solve and stuff, there's still a lush preventing yeah. you from getting a forward Mictal or forward TC, whatever it is. Oh, we do see Fox starting to make some attacks here. Um, Spearman. He's going to need to get himself to see Spearman are just dying to the Arcus. Yeah, yeah, Spearman. I don't like building Spearman against against Atlantean. It's it's a unit I just hate building. Much prefer to build myself siege towers, chariot arches, and in the end, if I have to build something else, elephant. The elephant, I like the elephant a lot. It's slow, but if you're on the offensive, like it, it does appear like Fox is here with the Ancestors Eclipse still in hand. I like the elephant a lot. Alas, he's getting big. He's getting his third town center up. Fox has already got his own third town center on this spot. He can push through uh, and force an Ancestor's Eclipse out is probably what he's thinking at the moment. So we'll see if he's going to be able to make that happen. I don't think, I don't think so. Well, we'll see. I think Fox is in a great spot. I don't think he should be fearing any aggression from the Gaia player here at all. Yeah. I think There's, Fox will use Ancestor's when he pleases. There is another interesting option here for PXX to go with. And that is, Gaia goes up to 40 ca uh, Llama Caravans. Arana's player stays without any Caravans in. And then the Gaia player just starts tributing gold over to that Arana's player because those Caravans are a little bit faster. So you can get a little bit of a advantage. 20% faster than the 10% loss. Obviously, you can get the upgrade to take away that loss of tribute as well to make up for that. Could be a, an interesting way to play as a team in that in those sorts of those sorts of ways as well i like that a lot actually i was just watching did, did you see awas has eight the spider layers ready yeah so my idea of elephants probably not the best in hindsight yeah, elephants are gonna get eaten alive it's very very strong gold power that spider layer if you use it if you get the right value out of it yeah and like right there they're placed perfectly yeah, yeah. Honestly, at this point, BXX is looking like they're in a really, really good spot. Obviously, you're playing against yeah, the Egyptians. Boom, so look at the score. That, yeah. yeah he's, Gaia Boom is really paying off. It's just, what, is, what are those? Yeah. He's just got them all. Just needs Carpenters. There's no surprise there, in all honesty, though. No, I guess not. It's crazy what Gaia can actually do yeah. when left, to, left what, to her own devices. That's right. <laughs> Surely the Ancestors Eclipse has to come down now. It's 30 minutes into the game. It's just getting worse and worse value the later the game progresses, generally speaking. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, the, the general rule you want to follow with an Ancestors Eclipse is to have at least three Siege Towers out there. Otherwise, you just, your opponent just leaves and they, you're not going to get anything for it. Yeah. I don't know what Fox has been doing, but obviously the 3 TCs and the constant village production from there has put him down a lot, but like it's, it's come at the cost of not really getting a good Ancestors Eclipse, which generally when you're playing Isis, I think you need to aim for that somehow. Yeah. Burek. Marcus has been pushed back. Joe has been forced into making Spearman here. He's, he's only just got to the heroic age, so... I mean, Gabu, he probably should have recognized the, the Spearman spam and maybe go on just straight for the Heroic Age, straight for the Mythic Age here. Like, all of these units he's got out. I mean, yes, he can support Marcos a bit, but he's got Ceasefire, and he can use that whenever. You don't have to use it to stop the Ancestors. It's not that strong of a god power. But this is a great surround here from uh, Shelty coming in to help out here. Oh, yeah. Who's really in a rough spot? Those terms just have to be microed properly. So it is hard. But yeah, Kaboo's in trouble here. So many spearmen. Give them give them uh, a medium upgrade at least, I think. <laughs> there they go. There they go. There they get a jagged on. That's good. There's the Ancestor's Eclipse. Finally, we see it. Yep. Only one siege tower, two elephants. Let's see the spider layers. I want to see two. I want to see at least one elephant get eaten. Look at the last resource. And he's gone Atlas here. Go close. Yeah, he's yeah. gone Atlas. Yeah, and he, he can begin setting up the trade route. He is already, as you said, right? Yeah, he's got himself the, the speedy llama caravans already without even having coinage. Very nice. Look at the elephant. Look at the elephant. Oh. 
thought thought it was gonna get eaten. I got some awareness here to like drag the elephant back here as well. Yes, yeah. you could do that. You're right. This is wild. He's got to leave here before that eclipse goes, because that you just click implode and you get max value because you're pulling in Shelty as well as Fox. Oh, that's true. I think there's a damage cap though, and I don't think that damage cap is uh, getting any higher if you even if you pull in two armies. It's like lightning storm, yeah, it can kill yeah, a certain that's... amount of damage. There's I think always a, always a damage cap on. God power, we'll see, see if he's gonna be able to. It. Okay, that's some communication problems there for sure. Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. Is it, okay, I'm opening a stream. It's, I just take it from Discord for some reason. Okay. Take it out his own palace. It's a bit. That's a bit tough there. But Oasis is in a huge position right now. Like he is. He is big. He's mythic age. He's really big. He's got resources. He's got a trade route started. The weakness right now for PXX is they got no walls up. Well, that, with the exception of the walls that Gaboo's placed here, they got basically no walls here in this game, which is going to allow DoD free reign to start getting in and causing problems. And another problem here is Awas, yeah, he's big, he's got a really big economy, he's mitigates, but his army isn't really threatening to Fox here. No. He's not seating down Fox's 30C anytime soon with this army. Fox is, yeah. and Fox has also got these siege towers out, which are really, really big as well. So I feel like we're yeah, watching so three 1v1s in this game. game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are right. Really looks like it. Dude, Joe is too, is really behind. He's really struggling. Yeah. Gavu's doing an amazing job. I think he's got a lot of good kills on these spearmen, probably with the Tuxodes. Yeah, Joe, Joe's, Joe went for this weird three town center, mass spearman, classical age, and set just just can't. You just you just get into a tough position unless you really get to put pressure on with those those spearmen before things get going. It just doesn't work when you're going three town centers. But yeah. it is Joe and Joe's mythic age now. He's got his market set up and one thing that is pretty busted as the ancestors is getting cleaned up. One thing that's busted about playing Egyptian in team games is market in the corner, Pharaoh on the market, trade bonus, spam mercenary, have infinite gold. So while yeah, set might not absolutely. be the best Egyptian to be playing, if there's no Ra in the game, he's still miles in front of other civs in terms of income that comes through. With the exception of Guy. Yeah, well, no Medje, obviously. So the mercenaries aren't quite as useful as yeah. if it was Ra, but still. Hmm. Just, you're absolutely right. It's just, it does seem like three about stalemate. What, what's happening on top? Marcos seems to be putting a lot of pressure on Shelty here. Yeah, Marcos just found a big advantage, actually. Marcos is three town centers, Shelty is two. The front the front base here is like, there's no way for Shelty to grab that. And and Joe at the Marcus moment... Grab that first, yeah, Joe at the moment can't come up and help him out with anything. I mean, maybe a tornado? Mm. You're right. Or tornado. Or tornado. That, no, that doesn't go down, right? There's no way that goes down. In fact, I, I don't even know. So. Probably a lot of uh, upgrades as well. Yeah, I don't even think the. Yeah, there we go. A thousand HP remaining. That's not the tornado. Yeah, you're looking terrible for. tornado. Really, really bad. Like using it on Marcus would have been much, much better here to help out Shelty. But maybe Shelty feels like he can just hold here. He's probably, he's probably not wrong. Well, he can hold, but he's two versus four CCs. Eventually, he can't hold any longer. Yeah. I mean, the other question is, why wouldn't you hold Tornado for, um, for like a Titan Gate? That's 100% yeah, coming in option. this game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It is a very boomy game. That Tornado sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Man, P.A. Awas is so huge right now. Look at his score. 
Wait, he's got so yeah, many. He's, he's, he's got mix, a, mixing in a lot of destroyers now, but still very, very little siege weapons here. Like, I really think he needs to figure out how do I translate this big economic lead over my opponent into something that's actually useful rather than just trading well. Yeah, it, I, I don't know about you, but I think it's simple. Just give the resources over to Gabu. Give the resources over to Marcos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them into a better position. You're not going to win here as a guy. I think that's you have to kind of have that in the back of your head that you're not going to be winning this game with brute force. But Poseidon would be. The Uranus will be against Uranus. So don't take the resources for yourself. Don't You don't even need to get those upgrades. You've already got full bronze. So stop there. That's fine. Help out your teammates. Yeah, I like that a lot. Either that or you could go Titan, obviously. Yeah, Titan's, Titan's always good. Yeah. Especially with this trade. But yeah, you see this Ar Arcus Destroyer, Arcus uh, Quintarius, and there's just a few destroyers. They're trading well, but that's it. Nothing else is happening. Yeah. And as the game goes on, like, obviously this, this, this Egyptian trade route is going to translate into mercenary, and then 160 population of infinite resources is not better than tons of mercenary. The mercenary are yeah, exactly. just too strong. Yeah. So, can we see as spectators if they actually tribute resources? Uh, I can see in the post game here. We aren't seeing any zero zero resources tributed thus far. Look at Gabu. He's got a lot of upgrades. His army is looking really strong. Yeah, Gabu's, Gabu's got his full champion in. He hasn't gotten a single armor upgrade yet. Which is, well, that, he is Hephaestus at least. He is, which is, but this is the thing, like, if the resources are coming over to him, he would have already been fully upgraded. Because the it's upgrades so are so true cheap. What you're saying. So true. That would be such a good help for Gabu. When you just hit that mythic age, you, you really need to spend resources on so many things uh, when you're playing a streak. So just getting, say, 500 of each resource would really matter a lot for Gabu here. Yeah. But Mark, Marcos now, he's actually... He's, the, 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 the game is actually lying on, on Marcos here. Marcos is in front of Shelty by a good margin at the moment. He's got four town centers. Yeah. He's got the mythic age. What Shelter mythic age yeah, was Hikati? Heck yeah. So there's no vortexes in this game, right? Uh, not unless Shelty goes for Helios. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, there could have been a Helios, so especially like a Helios the, the... on the bottom corner here or right in the back town center or anything. Oh, would be huge. There's so many good uses of this. But we must suppose that the Tatarian Gate has had some good value and allowed Marcus to get into this 4-2 TC situation mm. as well. And then the other thing here that I think Gabu is lacking is just some towers. And now he's starting to put them down. If you just have these towers down, these mercenaries yeah. wouldn't do anything for Joe. These, these spearmen would start hurting. And Joe is hurting at the moment, but he is getting some good raids in with those spearmen. Trying to do something here. He was setting up trade though, and you look at the score, he is not far behind from Gabu. Like, no. I think as long as it's kind of in a stalemate here, the same over on the left side here, stalemate is really favoring DOD. Yeah. Uh, except for that top side obviously being behind by one, two TCs effectively. Yeah, it's a, it's a big thing to overcome, but Mass Arcus are, are really, really good. The counter to Mass Arcus, for those of you who want to know, is. Either you go into Mass Contarius or you just start making some siege units. Actual siege units, not destroyers. Get your fire siphons out. Marcus don't kill them very easily. We are seeing that yeah, from Marcus. There's that fire siphon you, you asked for. Ooh, son of Osiris into the box now. Oh, I just only got himself eight military buildings here. With no tribute, I was like. You're gonna lose units in this game. You just, you just are, which means you need excess production. So he, he should probably be up to like 20 military buildings already. Just spend all that wood on on military barracks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even then, like, dude, I'd say we're all, already now. We're at the stage now where Fox is the one putting the pressure on. Yeah. While it was, it's crazy. Like, it was so far ahead, but the, his lead has not amounted to anything. 
now the Son of Osiris and the Elephants, Siege Weapons, Terror Dodge, it's just too much for the guy player to handle. Yeah, I mean, you, he went through lead so he doesn't have the um, Bite of the Shark tech to help him out here. But you get out the Fanatics, you get out the Mamillo, you actually start winning this fight. Rather than just full destroy you, you versus Son of Osiris and Mercenaries? Well, maybe. Maybe not against everything, but you have to kill off the Son of Osiris anyways. Yeah, yeah. Look at the top side. Mark is really putting the pressure on now. Just judging from the minimap at least. Yeah, Joe's now coming over to support though. He's got the towers, he's got a little bit of help here. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. All, all they the need to do is kill off huge. the fire siphon, and then once those towers are up, Marcus is going to hit a brick wall. We also see this yeah, beautiful yeah, yeah. side build started from Joe as he's trying to push in to, uh, to, to get in on this trade route. I really like this. It goes all over the map, isn't he? Yeah. He's defending himself from Gabu, he's assisting Shelty, and he's even uh, disrupting the trade route. It's really well done. Town center is down, though. But here's the thing. Hey. Gabu is not stopping. He is, I love this. Fortress on the front here. Get some towers down. Get this pressure in. I, I, part of me, though, feels like, why attack Joe here when you can just come down the bottom and, and kill the easier player? I don't know. Get some towers set up, block this up, maybe make some patrol yeah, or something. Some catapults. catapults would be huge. Yeah. yeah. And then and then send all the units down elsewhere. Mm. Either way, it's a tight situation here. Really difficult to, to assess who's uh, ahead right now, I think. Kabu realizing he has to react here. Probably some uh, Heatoroi would be even be a good thing maybe to stop this side build here. Yeah, Hitaro, 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 however you want to say it. I don't know. <laughs> um, that will absolutely clean this. I mean, yes, you got the set Spearman. He's got the upgrades for them. So the, the, those Spearmen actually, if they pop out in time, they'll be able to kill off the Hitaro really, really quickly. Yeah, they should. Do. Well, the towers are there now. <laughs> yeah, sentry towers are now there. I mean, you have to ask the question, What what is all this gold being done with? Who needs it? Marcos doesn't need it. Gabu doesn't need it. Maybe, no, Gabu needs to spend some resources here. He probably does need it. Does he have full upgrades? He does have his full upgrades. Yeah, I don't know why, how, how, that, how Joe managed to push back this effectively on the middle there, because... Oh, well, I guess it's the side build where Gabu was forced to send a lot of heavy guns down there. Yeah, yeah. Allow Joe to push back in. Yeah. I mean, you hate to say it, 26 minutes into the game, but is the only real option for... Or is the right option here for PXX, while pushing through this top from Marcos, to just say, you know what, let's get, let's get our Gaia player to build a wonder in this back corner here. Yeah, I think the longer the game goes, the the better situation is for Dodge. So, I obviously wonder is, uh, is, the, is what to do then. Two Egypt, there are two Atlanteans versus two Egyptians effectively here. Like it's, uh, yeah, they, they just lose out the when the game goes on. So you need either three Titans out there to be going to have to play for one game. You're gonna have to eventually either way. Just having a little bit of a. Uh... Lag from, from you there. <laughs> no idea what you said. <laughs> oh, sorry. I said, uh, seeing as you have put lanterns with two editions, you probably are going to need both Titan and Wonder to secure this big screen. Uh, You're Titan not going to force your way. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. I feel like my sound here is way louder than it normally is for some reason. Let me just do this. Oh, maybe not do that. Having some problems. Technical difficulties. Marcus doing a tremendous job here. He's getting like half of his army right now are siege weapons. Even more than half his army. It's basically just fire siphons and destroyers, isn't it? Yeah, but Fox is pushing Marcus. back and guess who pushes faster? Egyptian or Atlantean? Yeah. 
Son of Osiris is still alive, still kicking it. Yeah, Fox, Foxy MVP so far for this DoD team. He is, he's really keeping him alive with um, how well he's putting this guy to bed. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Especially considering the circumstances where Awas had such a good economy, uh, such an economic lead over all players basically on the field. Yeah. But oh, yeah, that is the story of Gaia, to be fair, isn't it? You have an insane economy, but then what do you do with the economy? That's always been the issue when you're playing as Gaia. Yeah. But Gabu now, he's coming in with the Tyroi. He's causing some problems. Completely missed this one. He's taking the Town Center down. But <laughs> this many villagers on the uh, on the Town Center. Oh, Son of Osiris scored out a little bit. Path block. Huge, actually. It's a really nice raid from Gabu. Polyphemus and Hitairoi. And then the uh, orchestra to take, take down the Son of Osiris, meanwhile. Yeah, Good that... stuff here from Gabu. Yeah, he's... he's uh... He's get, getting in, making it happen, but this town center is still going back up, and, and Oas needs this one back up now. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. He hasn't he even the started it, and he's still got tons of resources. Here's the other thing. Marcus is trying to grab this town center on the front, and I have this feeling this trade route and his economy here is just not that good, and it's not. He's not even able to support 180 pop at the moment. He's losing units way too fast. So he's got to get that under control. Yeah. And he's losing citizens trying to take this TC as well, isn't he? Kaboo's got all the resources in the bank at the moment as well. Damn. They really need to get started on those Titans and the, the Wonders, I think. Yeah, everyone's got the resources in all honesty. We've got the income, except for Sheltie, who's in a world of hurt here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, you don't build Heliopolis. Heliopolis don't kill off Egyptian town centers. Um, you want walls, you want towers, you want Metropolite. Really? Is that true? Yeah. Because mercenaries take care of the Heliopolis or what? Yeah, the, they just they just die too quickly. Spearmen, especially with Spearmen out. Obviously, if you're, if you're playing out yeah, in the open, spearmen. if you're out in the open and you don't have any stuff there, then first you go for the Heliopolis to control the area. But after you've got this control, like all these fortresses here, you need to start getting those Petropolis and walls down. Yeah, that makes sense. The Spearmen get a double bonus versus Siege weapon or something, right? Yeah, they got 100% versus Siege from memory. Yeah. Ah, yes, nailed it. Right. Nice. Now, get Marcos is pushed back. Researching there we go. Are there any god powers remaining? There is a vision from Joe, so he can he can vision in a Helios. Oh yeah, that's true. I completely forgot Shelty's still heroic. That's crazy. Yeah. And they can distribute resources over to Shelty to get in there if they really need to. You'd probably just allow Shelty to go mitigate here. Just say, all right, we'll hold the we'll hold this uh, this settlement for now. Get to that mitigate so we can start uh, threatening. Titan Gates, Wonders, whatever it is. The mercenary spam is real here. Towers, Son of Osiris, Catapult, yeah. Very large mercenaries. The oldest trick in the book, isn't it? Well, you just have so much economy. It's just... Like, the... This is something that I've complained about for a little bit, and it's the reason why Egyptian is as strong as it is in team games. Is because these these camels, these camel caravans, they're they're already getting twenty percent, twenty five percent boost. Then you add the team trade in bonus, which is a huge amount as well. And the Egyptian players are just getting this ridiculous amount of resource that you they can spend. Look, Fox's economy yeah, he's not is even, not... He's not even empowering it. Yeah, it's he's got just the Son of crazy. Osiris fighting for him and the second Pharaoh building the towers. So yeah. it could be even better than it is now. Yeah, whereas Owas here, he's also got the trade. It's also really, really nice, but he's just floating resources he can't spend. 
on anything but dryads. Yeah, because his buildings are getting destroyed by the catapults continually. Like, he's forced to always rebuild his uh, military barracks, palaces, everything. He can't keep up. No. And it seems like there's a bit of a stalemate up here as well. It's been this situation with 4 to one TC now for like 10 minutes, I feel like. Yeah, Marcus, Marcus is Marcus making a push them. work. He is making a push work. And oh, Joe is having some problems with holding this. So, Dirty's position is falling. And if this Titan can come through and slow Fox down, take out all these towers, take all out, out all of the stuff that Fox is... All these problems that Fox is presenting to PXX with just the Titan walking through. Maybe PXX can can pull through on this one. Yeah, it's true. I didn't realize Gabu was doing such a good job versus Joe there in the middle, but yeah. Peter Roy Eleopolis combination doing a good job here. Yeah, towers as well. It's just there's just nothing here for Joe anymore. Like he can spam mercenary out of his hometown center. He's trying to hold over here for uh for, for Shelty, as Marcos is yeah. not able to get the town center up just yet. Could be worth it for, for Gabu to actually send some villagers in and try and shoot this up or put, put some towers around there as well. But all the times yeah, are now a lot coming of, in. a lot of stuff that Gabu has to do because he's the, he's the only one with really good buildings. Like the Atlantean towers aren't really that great. And uh, obviously, Awas is preoccupied. We got... We, we got... Uh, Everyone's getting their Titans out, and it's just going to... I don't know if Awas can get his Titan. He can afford it. He should go for it, but... Yeah. It's going to be th two, to two, town, uh, th two to two Titans at this point. And now the uh, mm. Ford Town Center is up for Fox. Now you get Mercenary into your face instead of from back this here. This pressure from Fox is so insane. The catapults are just unable to be destroyed. Because there's so much support around them. All of a sudden, Sheridan's his mercenaries, towers, everything is there to support the catapults. And they're destroying everything they, they can. Yeah, it's just tower, towers, towers, and more towers. And more mercenary. And then after you fill the mercenary up, you, you put the Titans up. Oh. Shelty did go for the Helios here. He doesn't oh, have... Damn. Sad army there. He doesn't it's have the best much. army. It's going to kill the... It's going to kill the Titan Gate, though. Marcus's Titan Gate is not going to be able to survive. Shelty is microing down those citizens beautifully here as well. Uh, but this really will let Marcus, Marcus get here. this town center. Yeah, okay. That's actually really big. And and the thing with, obviously, with Vortex is that there's only a one-minute cooldown, right? So yeah. even if this kind of fails, even if he doesn't do it here, which it does seem like he will. Oh, it's so close. Oh, it's uh, it's so close. He barely keeps it alive. He's going to have oh to defend it again. But while this is going on, the town center is going up for him. And we do see the Titan coming in to try and clean this uh, town center up. Yeah. This is buying a waste of time. He's still going aggressive with the Titan there. Yeah, he has to. You, don't, you just get as much damage as you can, wait for your Titan as it's about to pop out, and then come back and rebuild. Yeah, yeah, that Titan is going to make things a lot easier for Fox. It's going to be so hard to stop. He's, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's a lawnmower. CXS <laughs> is the, the green field. Two Titans to one, with Marcos getting set behind. He's got five town centers now, but take a look at his economy, and it, it's not bad. It's not bad. He can buy food if he wants. He can ask for food if he wants. He should be. They should be tributing Marcos resources right now to support this five town centers that he's got. And that is exactly what's coming there from Gabu. Really, really nice teamwork there, especially because he's got all those citizens on the... Uh, on the Titan Gate, gets a whole bunch in. Kaboo's... Does he have on the side? Oh, a lot. That's good. Kaboo's still going. Still not able to get this town center up. Joe is such a difficult player to kill. He is so good at holding on to those, uh, those positions. Yeah, and using the Titan now to... What is he gonna do? Push Marcus back from this 550 TC. 
That's yeah. the thing with Atlantean, is you cannot really kill Titans unless you have a Titan of your, of your own. Well, if you've got enough favor and you've got five town centers, he's got 90 favor, he's got the resources, you can't heroize all those, uh, those units. And it does I work. It does work. But it's a lot of resources. You need a lot of resources, that's for sure. <laughs> you really do. And then even those uh, those hero arcs are actually quite easy to deal with. It's not like three heroes that still require a lot of focus. Yeah. These um, this Titan trade here is going heavily in favor of Fox, especially the priests are helping out. There's catapults helping out. So this Titan's going to push Owas back even further in this one. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's going to be able to not only take those TC downs, but he's going to be able to uh, to build his own TCs on those settlements very soon as well. Where are you going, Gabu? <laughs> now Marcus is getting pushed back as well. He does have his Titan now, now so at least he can trade. So what is it, uh, Awa Awas has Titan, I saw he was researching it earlier, so he just has to figure out where to place it now, because it has to be defended against this, do this Fox Titan as well. Yeah, I mean, you just, you just send this Titan over there, kill this one, and then place it down, I guess. That well, takes a while. Is Fox can just be a Fox just needs to keep this Titan alive and on the side of PXX. And as long as it's alive over on that side, that means that, that a Waz can't use his Titan. Yet. Yeah, uh, there's, then, a, there's then, a comment the, from... The full HP, the this full is... HP Titan is forced to chase this stupid bird around. Yeah. There's, a, there's also a comment from um, Shelty in chat that they had Vision and Vortex still for that third Titan. Right, right, right. It's just yeah, amazing so how big Joe is with, with with sitting on two town centers. He's like only building mercenary in this game. <laughs> how is the mercenary? His right. job. He's got it. Well, one Titan and mercenaries. <laughs> It's almost worth it to take that pharaoh off this and empower the town center to get those mercenary out faster. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You got the gold for it. Is he sitting there? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you Joe, don't, you don't need the pharaoh. Population. 20 of it is the titan and then there's the villagers and the caravans. Like, he doesn't have any military pub at all, to be honest. Oh. And the, the titan of Marco is also... He does have himself the mythic rejuvenation, but he's walking into... A ton of priests that have got funeral riots, that have got fully upgraded damage here. So they're actually, they ain't tickling that Titan. They're doing serious damage to the Titan. And Fox yeah, isn't, so good at killing titans. Fox isn't playing around. He's just like, no, nah, I'm not gonna, I don't want to trade. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit back and wait. You'd be trading. I think, well, like, like you said, there is still vision and, uh, Forging available, so it's actually no big deal. There's the trade. I guess Fox just wants more population for siege weapons. I guess. Yeah, more pop for a couple more priests and uh, a couple more siege weapons. Kill off the, the Titan, keep pushing. The last is yeah. one town center now. He's pushed back way back into his main base. And Marcos is pushed back. It's now Shelty can just get his town center be kept alive by the Egyptian players' economy because they're just so insanely big. Shelty's getting fed a little bit of resources, but this DoD team's being pretty yeah, greedy. Shelty's going to make a comeback now too with two TCs and, uh, put, and getting getting that third TC open to him as well. It's looking really rough for PXX here, especially with a watch this far behind him. Fox is mowing through everything. On the elephants coming out as well, just to add insult to injury. Take the buildings down so much faster. Yeah, and it's also just intimidating. Those yeah. big units. Yeah, this game is 100% on Gaboo's shoulders for PXX, but I don't, I don't think he's getting enough done here. No. 
the mercenaries in the towers and just the strong Egyptian buildings, it's too much. He could have sent heroes over to kill off this Titan, it probably would have been enough. And there's that uh, back corner wonder we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, I says, okay. Geez. Yeah, that's gonna be. It. Yeah, that's. What a good game, though. Yeah, it was solid. I mean, I you do you you sit at this in this position and watching from that omniscient perspective, and you can be like, wow, there's some opportunities in these team games that just aren't being taken. Like the fact that Gaia has got such a big economy, but you just can't win with it. You just go, well, what else could I do if not? If I just know that I'm not going to beat my opponent because it's just that's not possible in this matchup, I can just say, you know what, I'm going to make my Aranos player beat the enemy Aranos player, and then I'm going to die slowly. The, the Poseidon player is going to push through. I'm just going to give those resources away and just play a, uh, a like a quote unquote cockroach style defense against the Egyptian yeah, player. Yeah, I like that approach. And maybe you I can like find that wins. Approach to a lot. Yeah. Because like, like, like we were talking about, he's not going to do anything. 3 to 3 TCs, even with an enormous economic lead. You're mm -hmm. not going to be seating down the ISS players. So I love your approach here. I think that's uh, something they should have had in mind when they started this game and they picked the Gaia. Well, it's definitely something to try for the future, at the very least. Uh, I think Gaia is an untapped, uh, has a lot of untapped potential in team games, for sure. Uh, I'm glad to see that uh, OAS is giving it a go. It's a, a fun god to watch. Fun game. We'll get on to game number two really shortly. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.